All right, let's take a look at your BMW card drafts. Um, the first thing I will say, and I'll also mention it in class, um, when we're working with fonts uh, for our drafts, it's not necessarily a big deal, but for our finals, it'll be a little bit of a bigger deal. We'll have you outline your fonts, um, which is converting them into shapes if you haven't done it before. Fairly easy to do, it's just one click. Um, this way we don't have any um, like font mismatches, like there's a couple missing fonts uh, when I opened up some of your uh, some of your documents, and I just replaced them to like a generic-ish font that I thought was close. Um, but we'll uh, go over um, outlining fonts uh, so that this doesn't come up. It's usually a kind of a thing that I finalize uh, or that I do as a sort of a last step once I finalize everything. I outline all of my fonts, even if I'm packaging, um, and it does collect some fonts. Uh, just in case so that the printer doesn't have any problems um, with any kind of fonts or replacing or formatting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's just kind of like insurance to make sure that uh, that your fonts are, are fine or that they look fine, even though they're technically not fonts anymore. So let's start to take a look at some of these. And I'm just going in alphabetical order. Um, there are a couple of you, uh, which I've addressed already, um, that we're working in Illustrator. We need to be working in InDesign, um, either redoing your layouts or even copying and pasting um, from Illustrator and InDesign is relatively painless, um, so it's not too bad. The other thing I'll mention is um, file setup. There's a few of you that um, your sizing is, is off and bleed and trim, etc. And I'll go into how to change that um, and show you where all of that is. All the, spec uh, the specifics are in the um, assignment description um, and I'll go over all of that uh, as well. So let's take a look at the first one. Uh, we'll look at Laura's and uh, you'll see she's an illustrator. Um, overall, not a big deal um, with some of these. Um, being an illustrator, we can easily transpose them to uh, to InDesign. So let's take a look here. We have our first, our first card here, and then our second card. I'm just sliding over, over here. You'll see two very different, uh, very different looks. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit so you guys can see both of them. I was hoping we could fit both in the same window. So overall, uh, not a bad design at all. Um, I feel like we have uh, two different things sort of happening uh, information-wise. Um, we have uh, one very stripped down and then one obviously with a lot of text um, and a lot of different design elements. I feel like sort of a, a, a balance between the two would work uh, really well for you. Um, so for like the one on the left here, um, the engineer to move, uh, great product shot. Um, the only thing is, is we don't know what we're selling here. You haven't put the, the car model or anything like that, and the logo is also missing. So potentially maybe a smaller-ish logo in the corner here, um, or even if you had, and sometimes I'll do this just to like give you guys a quick, quick idea for what I was sort of thinking. Um, so even if we had our engineer to move in the top left corner, and then you could have a logo in the bottom left, even kind of like a similar-ish treatment. I'm just trying to select the black or a white, you know, or a white background, depending, um, depending on how you felt uh, how you felt it looked, either black or white, maybe white background for this one, or even if you wanted to carry this, you would have to do some tweaking, but carry this into the bleed. So this kind of white corner sort of just sort of falls off the edge there, and you can kind of center the logo into like this square space. Anyway, just an idea. Uh, but lo maybe logo in the bottom left, and then you could have... Um, the model info here uh, in the bottom right. So you have this nice movement of, you know, left to right reading your headline and then getting into the car cut and then, you know, reading the all new Active Hybrid X6, that kind of thing. Um, whereas here, uh, I like 
graphically what you've done. Um, I think um, that potentially you could kind of split the difference if you were to use the right one. Um, split the difference between the two um, where you might have a headline, either the same headline or, uh, or a, a different headline, um, and maybe lose some of this um, or all of this, I guess, text. That's a bit text heavy for the front of the postcard. The back of the postcard was really where uh, any kind of information is going to go. We're not really designing the back. We're just concerned about the front for now. Um, but I thought of if you had, as I'm haphazardly selecting everything, um, I'm just going to move those down. If you kind of had a similar treatment here, I like this background color. Again, we need to make sure that we're extending um, beyond or at least to the bleed, but beyond the bleed, if we want that color to go all the way to the edge of your postcard. Um, I was thinking um, you could have a somewhat similar treatment um, with this graphic that you kind of have in the background here. If you wanted that to sort of be underneath your car, if you kind of keep that within the safe zone, again, I'm doing this sort of like quick and quick and haphazard, but let's cut this and paste it behind here. So you get this kind of like similar photo idea, give or take, I'm squishing and I know we're not supposed to, but again, for the sake of demonstration, you know, you could potentially have, you know, a somewhat of a, obviously cleaner than this, uh, but somewhat of a treatment like this, and then maybe even a second, like this car cut, um, You know, give or take, if you if you swapped sides, even, um, and we can we could you could potentially do things later in Photoshop. Obviously, you don't want this to be backwards. Um, we talked about that a little bit in class. But if you flipped, let's reflect this. So I was kind of thinking. Oops, I have to hit return. I was kind of thinking. You know, somewhat of a similar treatment. I'm just grabbing my marquee or my rectangle tool here. You know, if you had somewhat, you know, obviously again, cleaner than this, but if you had somewhat of a similar treatment um, where you had this, um, this kind of thing going on where you had the boxes around and then your drop shadows and then, you know, boxes and drop shadows going this way. And then that would leave you room for a headline and potentially tagline, but definitely like the, the car info. And again, so it gives you that left to right, you know, headline, car, and even the road leading down to this uh, to this car. I know this license plate's backwards, I'm not worried about it um, for the purposes of this assignment. But again, giving yourself uh, room to fit the info and also uh, have a BMW logo in here as well. Um, so if we had the BMW logo bottom right in this case, um, I think overall you have a, a good idea and some strong, um, there we go, some strong concepts. It's bugging me, let me just place that behind, there we go. Um, so you have some strong concepts, I think it just depends on whichever way you want to push it. Um, this one is a little bit more complex visually, not um, overly complex, but uh, where this one's a little bit more simple, um, depending on how you want to handle the graphics and, and uh, the treatment of either one of these. But I think sort of some combo of splitting the difference between the two types of design you have going on, uh, I think would work really well here. All right, and we'll move on to Ari's. Um, and while Ari, I thought this was really well done, um, very interesting, you got the, the sort of topical cool John Wick in there, um, but we are only using images that are provided, uh, unfortunately. Um, so for this, I would, I would uh, get rid of our friend Keanu there um, and just have uh, just the car in there. As far as feedback uh, design-wise for this one, I didn't see a second one submitted, so I'm just gonna talk about this one. Um, unless it's way, nope. Um, I thought maybe it was buried way in the back there. Um, I zoomed in a bunch so these are a little bit pixelated. But yeah, again, I would remove Mr. Wick here. Um, potentially make this logo a bit smaller. 
Um, it is rather large, and keep in mind that these postcards are uh, are, are pretty large. Eleven by six is, is a pretty big postcard. That's why it's a jumbo mailer. Um, so you have lots of room to make this oops, to make this a little bit smaller to even tuck it more into that corner to get it away from the car just a little bit. Give yourself give yourself some room with the logo there. Like give it some some breathing room. Um, and then we want to make sure that we're advertising the right car. Um, the Active Hybrid X6, so you're pretty close. Instead of Active Pro, Active Hybrid. Um, the text, I don't mind. Um, I think it goes well with your uh, sort of John Wick theme. If we were getting rid of him, that might change your decision on what type of font to use. Um, but I think overall it works pretty well. I think it's a little bit light. Um, I feel like if we went, oops, I'm filling the, rather the, there we go. I was filling the frame rather than the text. So you get the idea. Now it pops off even more. Um, and again, when we get rid of that uh, positive space there, that gives you a little bit more room. Um, and you can have like the all new, you know, again, in the assignment description, uh, keep in mind the bold, uh, the new Active Hybrid X6 is the model that we're theoretically advertising. Uh, and then just some sort of tagline. Um, you know, even if you wanted to have something running here and even have um, a lighter graphic, um, if we had, you know, white text, it reads a little bit better um, on, a, on a cluttered background like this. If you had your headline up here and then you make this a little bit smaller, obviously, but have your, you know, new active uh, active hybrid x6 here uh, maybe fitting in this space um, but yeah i think there's a few things that are going on here um, one to remove the the celebrity likenesses um, two we need a headline and then lastly there's again i said there's a couple of people uh, that the sizing is a little bit off so uh, not a, a hard thing to change we just want to go into your file and document setup make sure that you're in inches um, so here the sizing wasn't generally off. It was your bleed and your trim um, that's a little bit off. So you want to make sure you have quarter inch margins rather than um, half inch margins because if you have half inch margins, it's all the way around. So it gives you like a full inch left to right when you add it together. So it's a huge margin there. Uh, and then we want to make sure that we have our bleed set up, which is also a quarter inch. And then once we punch in one and I hit tab instead of enter. And as long as your proportions uh, are constrained, um, it'll change it to all of these. But you wanna make sure that you have a quarter inch bleed. And I'm gonna check preview and now you'll see things work a little bit different. So I'm gonna hit okay. Um, so now you can see you have, you know, your important information within that safe area, which is great. Um, what you would need to change is your bleed, um, which is, relatively easily done. You just wanna make sure that your images are extending at least to that bleed, if not beyond it, um, but yeah, at least to that bleed. So you might have to shift your image just a little bit. Um, a couple of things shifting, but uh, I think overall a decent start um, with some minor tweaks. Um, again, can make this work really well. All right. And going on here. Here, let's zoom in just a little bit. Um, so for this one, uh, well, let me make sure there's, okay. We, all, we only have one here again. Um, just making sure that our document setup is correct, and it is. Um, so again, here, if we have the image um, and the graphic um, printing to the edge, you wanna make sure that you extend any colors uh, including images all the way to the bleed. So like in this case, I like this idea of having the space, um, but in this case, you wanna make sure that roughly, and you can go a little bit over. I'd have a tendency to go over with my bleed just to give them extra. Um, and then again, same thing here, except you're only gonna extend the bleed to the right. I mean, you could extend it to the left as well, but you just need to make sure that your image frame was underneath this black frame. And then select our image, and then again, just make sure 
that it extends top to bottom at least, and I'm holding shift to constrain my proportions at least to the um, to the bleed. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, sometimes you have to kind of split the difference with um, with sizing and bleed. So you can see here this falls outside of the safe area. Um, so you want to make sure sometimes sometimes it takes a little bit of kind of playing around with sizing and finding that kind of sweet spot to where, again, I'm holding shift to constrain my proportions and option to extend it from all sides. And again, you see the idea. I think we're getting closer, but it might take some some uh, some work there to get that, to hit that sweet spot on sizing. Um, and then I would um, definitely make this logo a little bit smaller again. We have lots of space here and you can kind of center it within this safe space if you wanted that or even sheet it right or left rather slightly um, depending on where the trim where it actually cuts but um, generally if you wanted to center it within that negative space um, and then um, i would have uh, potentially this could be nitpicky but uh, for your headline adventures await uh, it makes sense. I'm, I'm always used to adventure, adventure awaits, but I guess that would be singular. So if you're pluralizing the adventures, that totally makes sense. Um, I might choose a different font or make this a lot larger. Um, oh, maybe not that big. Um, I might make this a lot larger. Um, again, just sort of given the space you have and the type of font that you're using. Um, oops. Let's select this and make it much larger just to sort of see. I'm going up to about 50 point here. And then you just have to adjust your. So if you have a font that has, yeah, you might need to go even bigger than that. If you wanted to use a font that was a little bit more detailed like this, that had this, um, this different structure to it, the negative space that it's cutting out, I don't mind the font. You just need to make sure that it's big enough um, to where like these details don't get lost um, and it gets sort of like hard to read. Um, so I would make this much bigger uh, again um, as I'm selecting the font, you know, just see again, kind of like the car, you sort of have to split the difference or just see like that's right there. That's actually not bad the way that that reads. Um, so you need to make that significantly bigger. I think that was at like 62. Yes. Um, 62 point. Um, so now you can see the adventures await. Um, and then again, model, you know, model information. Um, this space might lead you to have, you might even be able to put it in here. It might be kind of small. Um, if you had the all new, right, the active hybrid X6, um, it might be a little bit small, um, but that might actually work if you had it, you know, you know, the new new on one line active hybrid X6 on another line here, um, to sort of use this space. Um, or even my other idea was potentially having this block if you wanted to have a similar effect ish, if it works. Again, sometimes these suggestions are just that suggestions. Um, if you wanted to have that across the bottom and then have your image go across, you know, the whole top of the card. And then again, you could have logo here and then you could have your info, your model info. You may not like that though, which is totally acceptable. Um, but yeah, I would try maybe putting here, you know, on one line new and then active hybrid X6 on another line if you wanted to use this space um, or have it within um, the bottom here either justified left or justified right. Uh, but overall, I think a really strong start, some minor tweaks uh, to sort of finish this one up um, for your revisions. All right. And then Kylie here. We have a few, and I figured I would show you all in one view first, so you can kind of get the idea. And then we'll zoom in to show you individual cards. And then I'll scroll down. And 
scroll down more. So I'll kind of talk about all of these. Um, I'm guessing that this one and this one might be a front and this one might be a back. Um, but if not, we can talk about it as a front. Um, so we'll talk about these two in general because I have some general feedback for both of, well, all of these, but both of these specifically. Um, first we'll check, I believe you had it right. We'll check out your document setup. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, I believe I changed the dimensions. You wanna make sure that you're working in inches when you first set up your document. So I changed the uh, rulers, which is an easy, I'm holding down control and clicking, oops, let's cancel this. Uh, control and clicking in the ruler and then it brings up the, uh, the different measurements there to change to. So I changed to inches. Uh, and then let's go into your document set up here. And you had the size correct, but uh, I believe since you were in points, um, your margins I believe might be a little bit off. So we're just gonna do quarter inch, oops, quarter inch all around. Make sure that's locked. And then our quarter inch of bleed all around. Oops, as I hit the wrong button. There we go. You can see our document shifted a little bit. Um, so there's going to be some adjustments that will that'll need to be made regardless um, because we've changed our bleed slightly. Um, so I'm going to go in. We'll talk about, oh, yeah, that's right, these two. Um, so first, I think the the logo is is quite large. Again, you know, keep in mind these are these are jumbo mailers, um, so this is 11 inches wide. So it's a pretty giant logo. Um, and generally, the, the BMW usually has it tucked into either one of the corners um, or a, a space if you have a graphic. Um, so I would definitely reduce the size of the logos for sure. Um, I think as far as one of these two, um, generally, the only reason, I'm not totally discounting this, uh, but the only reason I'm focusing on those two is because generally when you have definitely the front of a postcard, um, you generally want to show a full product. Uh, and if you don't show the full product, then you'll have um, uh, multiple images, like sometimes, uh, like in the samples I showed with some of the inset images. Um, so this one might be good for like a back of a card or, you know, this this detail inset image or something like that um, might be a little bit better suited for that. So that's kind of why I'm focusing on, the, on these two in particular. Um, so one, reducing the logo, uh, and they're both a bit text heavy. Um, I think this one works a little bit more um, just given the amount of text that this one has. Um, I see what you were doing, uh, and, and it... It makes sense in the context of the class, but as far as like if theoretically if this went into production, it'd be a little bit different. Um, but yeah, overall, well, we'll talk about um, adjusting the size of these logos, and I'll zoom in a little bit now. Um, potentially, let's select both of these. So for me, these just a bit smaller. Oops. Thought I selected everything, but I guess I did not. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller here and I'll readjust in just a second. So we'll have give or take again, this is sort of quick, quick and dirty as they say. So whoops, as I moved it, I'm just resizing and I'm holding shift and option to adjust from all sides. And again, I don't need to get too nitpicky with it, but you get the idea. So having the logo a bit smaller, um, that's about half the size of that was. We could even go probably a little bit smaller than that. Um, we wanna make sure that we are, we're not squishing it and that is 100% potentially. I'm just going through my fitting options to fit it. No, it was a little bit squished. I just hit proportionally. You can see it tweak up just a tiny bit. Um, so I might, I, I understand the spacing here. Um, just given some of this is, you know, the background, that's not too bad actually. The background is a little bit hard to read. Um, so I understand why you have that, that big space there. Um, you might even be able to, if you put this into two separate frames, um, so I'm just gonna cut that 
and then I'm going to paste it randomly to somewhere else so that this is on one line. And again, just sort of quick. So having that be in two separate frames uh, gives you a little bit more uh, more room to, to sort of move them around and play with that. Um, so I, I, I like the idea of what you have going on there, maybe even something like like this to give it a little bit more movement, um, fit it maybe within this space here a little bit better, um, might work, you know, having it on a two separate lines and also again, sort of give it a little bit of movement left to right. Um, and then potentially shorten this, um, I'm honestly kind of struggling at the moment, uh, to shorten that, um, I'm trying to think of, usually BMW is in first person. Um, so you could even have like BMW didn't just create another SUV, maybe. Um, something like that, we can work on that. Um, maybe simplify this this tagline a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think something you know relatively simple like um, Adjusting, adjusting this text a little bit, maybe making this a little bit smaller. Um, you know, especially if it's going to be, if you're going to have it above this tagline here. Um, you know, maybe, what size is it now? That's almost two inches by two inches. That's fairly large. You could probably go at least half, half, maybe even one inch. One inch might be a little small, but, um, but one and a half, uh, split the difference between what we have now might be, might be pretty good. But I think overall, um, you know, pretty clean, um, very well done. I'm just moving this over here just to see if that reads, mm, that doesn't read great, but, um, you know, we can, we can play around with it and see sort of what works with this graphic. Maybe not so much that, um, but you get the general idea there with this one. And then moving on to this one, basically the same kind of thing, uh, making, making this logo a bit smaller. Um, you know, you could have, uh, potentially play with this text, um, BMW invented something entirely new and then have, you know, the, um, active hybrid X6 down here, um, and then lose, lose this text just cause it's a bit, uh, it's a, it's a lot of text there. Um, and then I would take this logo and sort of tuck it in the bottom left. I wanted to say right, and I knew that wasn't correct as I'm grabbing all of this. Um, so bottom right, and then I would scale, if I can find my scale tool, um, my scale tool here. And I'm going to preview. Oh, that's not letting me. So yeah, at least 50% would work. And then that way you can tuck that into this bottom corner here. And then that gives you room to have, you know, your, um, your model, your model name down here, uh, and then potentially headline up here. Um, again, sort of simplifying this this headline a bit, uh, and then sort of lastly with this one again, just watching our um, watching our bleed and trim, uh, just making sure again that this extends at least to the bleed since the bleed dimensions changed slightly from when we originally worked on this. So again, you'll have to kind of like find that find that sweet spot between bleed. Uh, bleed in safe area to get this to get this car um, car within that safe area um, but yeah I think overall again a very strong start um, with these uh, and again I talked about this one a little bit but I feel like this one isn't bad um, I feel like this one would work for potentially like the back of a card um, or uh, if you were to use this, this uh, image I would get rid of this text and sort of handle the headline tagline similar um, to the one of the top two. Uh, and again, maybe make this, I'm just gonna get rid of that, make this much smaller, and even tuck it in this bottom corner or this bottom corner. 
uh, maybe put a, a color behind it or something like that. Um, or even in the top, you know, if we're getting rid of this text, top left in this case might work a little bit better. Uh, and then you could have information, potentially an inset image um, or a couple of inset images of full, the full front of the car. Uh, and again, just watch our bleed and trim um, so we can extend our image right as I select the wrong thing. Um, just making sure that we have enough bleed in our image which we do, I'm just kind of nudging it a little bit. Um, but again, uh, if you were to use this as a front, um, you know, I might have uh, your, your headline fit within here maybe, uh, and then the model number down here or something. Um, what I think might be interesting for this, uh, again, is like sort of a back, uh, back of a postcard is if you lighten it up, if we had it like 50% opacity, then you could have this space for text or something like that. But I didn't want to completely ignore this, but I feel like the other two are, are much stronger. Um, and this sort of reads more to me uh, as, as a back of a postcard um, kind of thing. But I think overall, again, you know, some relatively painless revisions and I think you could have a really strong piece. All right, and then Amanda's, when we talked about this in class a little bit, and I'm gonna back out so you guys can see both here. Oh, and we'll back out a little bit more so you can kind of see both, and then I'll zoom in so we can focus on one or the other, and then I'm gonna view my extras. Go to normal mode so I can see, there we go. So in this case, you can see um, how uh, she's extended this graphic beyond uh, the trim to go to the bleed, which is great. Um, we might need to, if we use this one, we might need to tweak um, your image. Oh, no, it's just your frame. So make sure that your frame extends at least to the bleed. Again, I tend to go beyond it just because that's how I am. Um, but yeah, I think overall, again, with this car cut, um, splitting that difference here where uh, this is right up against the safe area, which isn't bad, um, but uh, it is a little bit um, disproportionate. You've squished it a little bit, so I'm just gonna fit frame proportionally. And then there we go, now you can see how it nudged out. So you might, again, might have to play around and split that difference, um, or not, yeah, a little bit. You have to split that difference a little bit with the, um, with the sizing. Um, we might be able to get away with that actually printing wise if we were to to be honest i've cheated it here and there if necessary um, that's cutting it a little bit close but there's some tricks we can do potentially um, if you wanted to use this image but aside from that let's talk about the rest um, i think we have a lot of different effects going on and it's a little bit visually distracting um, i'm gonna Go to preview mode again just to show so we can see um, how it will actually cut and print. Um, I think uh, I was debating about the bevel to be honest on here and here. Um, I think with the drop shadow and bevel and stroke and effects you have on the text, I feel that since the bevel here is on as well, I feel like it's a bit visually distracting. Um, but I think that if you left the bevel on your graphic that you have um, and then made this text just a little bit plain, to be honest, um, you know, just a white fill uh, or a black fill. Um, I'm just going to change this to green. I th think you have a gradient effect on there, it looks like. Um, or even black text with a white stroke, et cetera, et cetera. We can, we can work on it. Um, but I think you have a, just a lot visually going on, so it's a little bit visually distracting, um, especially here as we zoom out slightly. Um, this gets a little bit lost, um, so I might go, especially on the bottom, just a plain, you know, plain type, no effects, maybe a simple drop shadow. Um, but yeah, I, I like your um, your tagline. You oops, as I select the wrong thing, um, the tagline that you have going on, I think works well. I feel like we can nudge it over 
just slightly, you know, give or take, kind of center it within this visual space. Uh, but again, simplify that text. It's a little bit hard to read. Um, you can kind of get away with it with a top text here. We can do some things to clean it up. Um, but I like this sort of overlap we have going on. And as I made a black fill with a white stroke, I feel like that's actually relatively cool. Uh, we can play with that in class for sure. Uh, but I think overall, for this one, uh, just some minor tweaks again, um, watching, making sure that we're not distorting images. Um, I think the placement of the logo works. I like the graphic that you created. I think that works really well. Um, using our compound path tools to create an interesting graphic. Um, I think we could kind of play around with this and push this a little bit even, oops, even higher up. That might be too high, but um, we could split the difference-ish there or even bring it back down. Let's bring it down here. The Y is what's throwing it off. Um, there we go. At the top of the letters here, so they stay within the black, and then this doesn't drop down too far. Uh, but anyway, we again we can play with that in class. Uh, but I think yeah, I think overall, you know, pretty pretty strong start with your first one, uh, and then let's go to the second one. I think again, um, overall, just uh, similar notes for this one. Um, the um we talked about this graphic before um i might um with this you might have to adjust it slightly with this one i might take off that bevel um I, it's it's a bit or at least take off the bevel on this circle maybe um because it is a bit visually distracting or again just just clean up take off the effects off of these for sure um but for this i kind of like the idea of um, I don't want to distort it, but having, you know, this graphic idea sort of start, you know, give or take here, and then this way you can have your, oops, you can have your text, why am I not, I don't know why it's locked, I can't go, oh, it's giving me a warning about it's too large for the pasteboard. Um, but having the text overall, I think it's the effects you have on it. Um, you know, having the text start here and all, I'm just going to cut that. Um, so if we had, going to my text tool, um, Oh, why isn't it letting me? There we go. I went to a different screen mode by accident. Oh, I started doing my Illustrator thing where I started typing before I made a frame. Let's do this as I'm all over the place. So I'm going to delete that and then go back to my text tool. And then I'm going to drop a frame in here. X6. And then I'm just going to arbitrarily make this 50 point. Oh, that's way too big. Let's try 42. And then making that. So give or take, again, fitting in, I don't know if we had new, there we go. I'm just gonna have it start with new, and then I'm gonna make my text color paper here, just to have a white for now. So I was thinking having, obviously we could format the text a little bit more, um, but I was thinking you know, something like this, new active hybrid X6, or even, yeah, even this text treatment. Um, just what kind of fits within this rectangular space and then this sort of graphic is left by itself to sort of speak for itself kind of and, and um, be a, uh, something interesting visually. Um, and I would potentially make this um, go across the bottom here even like that and then 
have it go either to the edge or even off so you just have the bevel at the top you know so you just have the one bevel at the top and then have oops oops as i'm well i think it's the effects that are on here that's um limiting my movement here um but having oops deleting these sorry um so theoretically we can I can show you what I'm talking about here. Um, selecting the logo and such, and maybe moving it into onto the right side. So you kind of have these two graphics working, hopefully well within each other. And you can even select under your effects using global light. And what that will do is it'll give you the same light source for your entire project. So this way the light source on this bevel matches the light source with the bevel here. Uh, and then you could have, I'm just going to copy and paste this quickly, and you could have your tagline down here that by the time the imitator's tagline running across the bottom I think might be kind of cool. Um, and then again, we just want to make sure that we're not uh, that we're not distorting our images. And I can't find the center. Oh, there it is, the center of this. There we go, and then I want to fit proportionally, and then move things around a bit. So you might have to, again, sort of play around, but I'm holding shift and option here to, so that I don't distort, but you'll see the image handles even a little bit differently. Um, but again, just kind of like splitting the difference between the graphics and your image, um, I think could be, uh, could be really cool. But I think, yeah, overall, both designs pretty strong. Um, I like the graphics. It creates some cool visual interest. Um, I think, again, some, some relatively simple editing and modifying could go a long way with this one. All right, for our next one, I believe we have to go back to Illustrator. And I'll open up Illustrator here. Oh, maybe I went too early, but either way, we'll talk about this one. So this one, um, I feel like as far as layout goes, and again, we'll show rulers just to make sure. Yeah, so here we wanna make sure, especially uh, since this is an Illustrator rather than InDesign, uh, we wanna make sure that we're using the appropriate program, but also we're in points here rather than inches. So you'll see when we go to inches, things will shift dramatically. When we go to our document setup, So here, I'm going to edit the artboard, and now you can see here our artboard is super tiny. Um, since we switched to inches, it's less than an inch wide by way less than an inch high. So we want to make sure that we have our dimensions correct, um, which is 11 by 11 inches by 6 inches high. Uh, and I'm just going to set this up in Illustrator just to have it in Illustrator. Now you'll see how small our elements are so I'm just going to kind of resize this so uh, you can see that we've you know you, you've sort of designed portrait uh, or almost a square format rather than the format of the postcard so aside from uh, the obvious of changing our um, changing our dimensions conceptually I, I like the idea um, there's just you know again some relatively minor tweaks we want to make sure um, we'd have to relink this to go back to a hundred percent I believe um, but I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it to I believe give or take for the purposes of this you get the idea of how big and again with this image this one's a relatively tricky image um, to fit make sure that that's fit well within the the safe zone um, but I might tweak some of these images again make sure that our image is uh, the correct dimension um, I like the idea of having the BMW logo upper right here uh, and then these inset images are pretty cool again we want to make sure that we're not distorting them at all uh, and I might just kind of like rearrange them um, and make sure that they're the same size or if you're going to make them different sizes make them different sizes for a reason right um, so if we're using, I don't know if these were masked, they were not, um, just trying to release masks. Um, if you were going to make them different sizes, I would do that like on purpose, 
um, or with an intent. Like if you were to have, um, I'm just going to make some rectangles. So if you were to have, you know, a square image, and then let's say a rectangular, you know, for some reason, and then another square, let's say, right? Oops, as I select the wrong thing. Um, I would just make them, you know, make them either all the same size or different sizes for, for a reason. If you wanted to have, um, you know, again, sort of, I've seen people do where they have like, you know, a smaller rectangle. And then I'm just kind of going to give or take about a third and then a larger rectangle. And then an even larger rectangle for the bottom one, you know, again, to sort of give it some movement and then you can place the images inside of that. Um, if you're going to have um, your inset images be different sizes, you just want to make sure that it's um, designed with intent, that's all. Um, or make sure that they're the same size um, without distorting. You want to make sure in InDesign that we're keeping our frames. I'm distorting these on purpose. Um, just to make sure that these are all the same size. Again, if you wanted to have them be the same distance apart, um, you know, again, the same, the same um, distance from your safe area, all that. Um, or if you wanted to offset them, again, offsetting and things like that are very cool and very useful. But again, you just want to make sure that you're doing it with an intent um, you know, so it doesn't look like a mistake or it doesn't look like, uh, you know, something that, that was sort of more of an afterthought. You want to make sure that all of your design decisions are done with intent. Um, and then going on to your headline, I like the headline. You could either have it, I don't mind it down here. Um, I might make it a little bit bigger. You know, have it fill up this space and I would have you'll ever own. Um, because we're talking to the advertiser, generally not about ourselves, basically. Uh, the only BMW you'll ever own. Um, or I'm trying to think, there's other ways we can say that. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of ways to play with this. Uh, you know, the only BMW you'll ever want to own. I don't know, something like that. Um, I'm trying to think of it in sort of a consumerist sort of way. We, we, we don't want them to only buy one BMW. We want them to buy a new one every three years, right? Uh, so I'm trying to be cheeky with that. But I would have your um, either your headline, again, at the top, and you can change the color, uh, and then have your model info here, or have the model, um, the model name at the top and then your uh, your headline at the bottom. But I think overall, again, I, I keep saying it, but uh, you know, a strong start, um, just some sort of uh, design critiques in that, like again, if you make any design choices, just make sure that they're, um, that they're done with intent, um, that, that it shows that there was intent there. Um, so people know, for better or for worse, um, that, you, that you, you know, applied your uh, design decisions for a specific reason. Okay, then back to InDesign. We have a couple here for Morgans and a different, there we go. So we have card one in a separate file, which is totally fine. Um, and then card two. And I'll say the same thing I said generally about everybody. Um, great start. Um, I think some tweaking here. I like this image um, and I like this sort of treatment of um, this negative space. Again, we wanna make sure that we're not squishing logos especially. Um, you don't wanna distort logos at all. Uh, we could probably make that much smaller. Um, Yeah, right now it's about one and three quarters of an inch. Um, and then you could even tuck it in the bottom, bottom right if you wanted to. 
um, or if you wanted to keep that space this wide, um, you totally could do that. Um, but just, you know, obviously, however you're going to center that within that white space there. Um, I tend to gravitate, especially with BMW, I tend to gravitate towards that bottom, um, that bottom left. Uh, yeah. Um, and then having uh, this again, like I said about an earlier one, staggering this and even separating frames, uh, again, kind of helps to to give you a little bit more control over line work. Um, so, you know, if you had, again, kind of give yourself, I'm putting the A sort of in between that space to see if that actually works. Um, so if you had a little bit, I'm gonna try to duck this top left. Um, you could potentially make this bigger, again, if you were going to keep this white space um, where it is um, or have uh, less white space. Um, you could either make a white frame behind this. Um, again, if you want it to be white, you're going to have to make sure um, that you have a fill. Um, it's going to also be paper, so it's going to depend on the substrate that you're printing it on. Usually white if it's a color for any other reason. Um, and then we want to make sure again that we're not disproportionately filling our frame um, and squishing our image. But yeah, again, kind of like centering this, you have a little bit of room to move that up slightly. Um, and then again, making sure that our image, oops, that our image hits. Oh, this is just a frame adjustment, which is nice. Um, so you just want to make sure that that frames I didn't want to move the photo I want to move the frame go into my direct selection tool and grabbing that frame line there we go um, anyway um, so some minor tweaks again making sure that we're hitting we're hitting that bleed um, And I might reverse these and even try like a darker text. This is where it's tricky these texture backgrounds um, Can be can be very tricky um, even Yeah, black isn't too bad um, You could even potentially do a drop shadow kind of like how we had in the magazine cover um, so if we did a copy edit and I copied it and then uh, paste into place and then I'm going to nudge it to the left two clicks and up two clicks and then I'm going to change my text here to paper and then now you can see it pops up a little bit more and then that also gives you some freedom to make these both a bit bigger uh, if you wanted to scale slightly bigger do like 120 percent maybe 125 percent and i'll hit enter even bigger than that you could probably go since we have that drop shadow but um but yeah paradise in your own backyard and then again oh yeah model number here um so yeah i think just kind of like reorganizing slightly just to give yourself a little bit um uh, a little bit more room to kind of play um, and again if you wanted to make this a little bit shorter as I'm not sizing my frame properly but if you wanted to have your you know your white space be a little bit smaller that would work as well um, to adjust uh, to adjust the image in the frame there to give yourself a little bit more space but I think some minor tweaking here with the fonts uh, in particular or with the text uh, handling in particular uh, can, can really help this sort of finalize for your revision. And then we'll talk about the second one here. The second one, a great cut um, with the car cut. Um, a lot of people don't use this one. Um, again, because of the texture, the texture is tricky, um, but this one doesn't read too badly. Um, it's, it's The background is all a little bit dark. Skies can be tricky. In this case, it's not too bad. Um, again, just some sort of minor revisions here, just making sure that our image is definitely hitting the bleed. 
Um, so we want to make sure, you know, we might need to tweak the sizing of things a little bit um, just to make sure that we're hitting that trim and bleed and then keeping our car in that safe space. Um, you know, maybe just formatting this, you know, so it's all within here. So it's all kind of like within this negative space there. Um, so it's a little bit less tricky to read. Uh, you could even make your, your text a little bit bigger and then you have your, your um, car line as well. Um, you could potentially make that a little bit bigger, but I don't mind because again, these are gonna be fairly large. Um, the only thing here is if you were gonna have this white space behind the BMW logo, I would give the actual logo a little bit of a little bit of room to breathe. Um, you know, if you wanted to put a square, you know, sort of a more uh, perfect square behind it. Um, and then again, make sure that we're not uh, that we're not distorting the logo at all. And then I just hit proportional fitting. So I knew it was round. Um, but yeah, I was going to potentially say maybe play with having the logo be on the right side. And then you could kind of tuck it within this space if that was something that you were potentially wanting to do. You know, again, making this, uh, making the white area more square, um, more of an actual square rather than Oops, I'm hitting the wrong button. But yeah, tucking this potentially, and again, this may or may not work, but you know, potentially having that in the left, or rather the right side, not left. Uh, and then that sort of gives you room to play around with, you know, where to put this, even potentially play with the idea of, you know, life's too short. Oops, I wanted to cut it on. Uh, to drive a boring car, you know, even if you kind of want to play with something like that, um, you know, to have it on two different lines just to fill the space up or, you know, give it a little bit of motion so that uh, the your, your layout isn't so uh, isn't so static. It's a little bit more dynamic um, and it reads a little bit uh, a little bit better uh, and gives you a little bit of uh, motion and all of that. But I think overall both, again, really great starts for both of these. Um, and depending on which one you go with, I think you could have a really good final regardless of which one you choose. And then chase. So I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, we have two. Um, so I'll show you, we have this one. And then I'll scroll down a little bit and we have this one and again I almost dropped my mouse uh, and again we want to make sure that we're not squishing images I can tell that I believe this one squished a little bit definitely the logo is squished a bit we want to make sure that we're keeping those proportions correct I think this one is um, maybe not uh, but anyway um, we want to make sure that we're keeping our proportions intact um, so we'll start with this one because it's on top um, I really like the idea of introducing this graphic uh, from the M3 or from you know BMW BMW in general. I think it's a kind of a cool design element to use. Um, I think your headline could definitely be here, uh, depending on. There we go. I want to put that on one line. Um, I would have this. It's a it's a relatively short, which is fine, relatively short uh, headline. Um, I would definitely make it bigger, uh, make it much bigger. Um, if we scale this 125%, it's gonna, actually, that's not too bad. Um, even 150%. Um, and maybe make it a more, more bold font, potentially try uh, all caps as well here, just for the headline. Um, and definitely play with, this is where skies can be tricky, right? Um, if you had this text, let's change that to black. Oh, that actually reads pretty well. If you had that black, even with a white drop shadow behind it, potentially, um, and again, sort of give it a little bit more, more dynamics. Um, I would definitely use a bolder font for sure. 
Um, and, you know, even make this, I feel like doing it another 150 is going to be, well, maybe not. Maybe a little overboard. Maybe not. We'll have to see. And you'll have to decide how you like it if you change the font type to bold or something like that. But um, I like the idea, I'm going to back out slightly. I like the idea of having, you know, the headline here. That might be a little big. But the headline here, um, you know, sort of justified right. And then your... Um, graphic and the model number justified left. I think it might even be cool to have, make sure that I have the right thing, yeah, have this sort of more tucked bottom right corner or left corner, I keep doing that. Um, and uh, the one thing you're missing is the BMW logo, so throwing that maybe bottom right or top left, uh, see see where it works. Um, you know, maybe even keeping it, give or take, about the same size of this essentially square that you have going on. Um, I think could work could work really well. And lastly, about this one, I would say you definitely want to make sure that you're hitting this bleed. Um, if you want this image to go all the way to the edge, you want to make sure again that we're carrying our image to the bleed there. So we need to adjust our frame on both sides, top and bottom, and left and right. So now we have, so it might take a little adjusting um, with the with the image size, but now if you wanted that print to go directly to the edge, you wanna make sure that we're extending your image beyond, um, beyond to the bleed. Um, but I think overall, you don't have much of a problem with that. So I think some tweaks here with the text, uh, adding the logo, um, I think overall, um, you know, some, I guess all decisions are major, but some relatively minor decisions to make with text formatting and placements. Uh, and I think this one could be really strong. And then lastly, we'll talk about this one. This one, um, you have a really nice dynamic uh, layout already set up, right? I think here, again, making sure that this is proportional. So we're not squishing our logo if you're resizing quote by hand by using your mouse you want to make sure that you're holding shift so that I'll hold shift so that you're not squishing the logo as opposed to not holding shift now you can see we're kind of squishing our logo um, you know again this is about an inch and a half by an inch and a half um, you know you could definitely tuck this into the upper left corner for sure um, I like how you have this sort of like dynamically set up, right? Um, I'm just kind of thinking of a way to, to, to push this even more. I feel like you can make this text way bigger. Um, I'm just going to move this off for now. Um, I think, I again, I might go with a little bit more bold type. Um, I'm just selecting these three. I like how you have this set up. I would definitely go bigger with that if you were to use this, um, you know, maybe even larger so it's more of a headline right and potentially have it sort of line up you know over here um, I was just I got quiet because I was just thinking about potentially editing this the discover the all new um, which I don't mind at all, actually. I was thinking of, of editing that and just cutting and just having it start with all new Active Hybrid X6, but I actually kind of don't mind, don't mind that. So here's where some formatting is going to come into play again. I feel like this is a good size. Um, you might even be able to make that larger or more bold. Um, and I might either tuck that bottom right or bottom left. Bottom left might work a little bit more. Um, even if you wanted to make it slightly smaller, um, maybe even put it on two lines, um, depending on where you're going to place this, right? Um, I was thinking having the total package here be much larger as well um, as I scale. So you essentially have like your elegance, intelligence, dominance, the total package, you know, either, you know, maybe not super tucked bottom left, maybe even up a little bit or 
switch these up, switch these out. See which one you like, you know, see, see how, you know, how you like it best. Um, maybe remove the punctuation, maybe not. See how you like it. It works with or without it. I think if you had this sort of as like, although it's not a, uh, it doesn't have to be, but it's not a complete sentence. Um, if you had these as commas, maybe even try that or even just get rid of them. Um, you know, but I was kind of thinking of having these three be about the same size, but much larger. Um, so you have this kind of going towards the car here. Um, and even if you had, again, I keep going to this, um, I keep going to this, like separating this, I find it just potentially, and I guess that's just experience, but I feel that it's, um, breaking this line up kind of works. Um, you know, you could potentially even make this, it's 18 point font now, even bring this down to like 14 point. So you have the top text smaller. So you have discover the all new, you know, and then active hybrid X6, even if you had this a little bit bigger, you know, 20 point, but 18 is still pretty decent size. Um, you know, even if you kind of wanted to do, again, sort of this, give or take, I'm just kind of ballparking this. Um, if you wanted to have this kind of offset like these, um, so you're kind of mirroring or repeating that, that kind of theme-ish, uh, and give or take, you know, having it. Uh, having it within this area uh, and again lastly i'll say again um, making sure that we are uh, adjusting our frames so that it at least hits the bleed there if you want that print to go all the way to the edge if you don't want that print to go all the way to the edge then you're going to have to bring your image in and give it a bit of a border um, so that the border uh, has has room for that trim and bleed um, again this one is a bit of a tricky image to use to fit within that space, but there is a sweet spot. Um, so again, it's just kind of finding that sweet spot where your car fits within your safe area. And then I'll just double check your document settings just to make sure, yeah, we're a quarter inch, just to make sure it looked a little big, but I think it just appears that way because of the big screen. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, again, making sure that we're going to our bleed um, and, and, you know, some tweaking. But I think overall you have, uh, two really great ideas, um, maybe even a combo of the two, something um, something like that if you wanted to. Uh, but I think you have two really strong starts here, and I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Um, so overall, I think um, everybody did a great job for our first round of revisions. Uh, again, the major things are is to make sure that we're keeping our proportions intact uh, and that uh, we're making sure that our document setup is is uh, properly set up and uh, lastly making sure that if we have a bleed uh, in our designs to make sure that the bleed is uh, your your images or colors are going all the way to the bleed not just the uh, the trim of your document